Hi, I'm Alex Godfrey. Welcome to East Off Grange Farm. My family, as RJ and A. Godfrey, has been growing potatoes and farming other crops on the Isle of Axholme and on the Lincolnshire Wold for three or four generations now. And here at East Off Grange, we're the spot farm hosts for AHDB. So as well as potatoes, we grow sugar beet, combinable crops and vining peas. Since 2018, we've been the spot farm host and we alternate that between this site at East Off Grange and Summerby Top on the Lincolnshire Wolds so that we can give nearby growers and growers from further afield a chance to see different soil types when they come to AHDB's open days and farm walks. All the potatoes we grow are aimed at the supermarket fresh market, which means we have quite tight quality criteria that we have to fit. Those are around the size of the potatoes, the quality of the skin finish in particular, because consumers are after a particular look in the products they buy. That means we've got to grow them in the right way to achieve those tight criteria. The challenges obviously don't just come from the growing of the potato, we have to harvest them, handle them, through a grading process and then bring them into a store like this and store them successfully for up to nine months before they're ready for sale. And storage is a big part of making sure that quality is right at the end. The grading process immediately after harvest is absolutely crucial to making sure we only get potatoes in store that we're going to be able to sell. A certain amount of that can be done mechanically by brushing off the worst of the clods of mud and stone and the trash from the top of the potatoes and also by riddling the potatoes, so sorting out the smaller ones and the larger ones by size. However, the quality check um, is largely reliant on the human eye. So there we're pu pulling out damaged green uh, potatoes or potatoes with any pest on them at all. One of the fundamental problems we have is that we have to grade these potatoes dirty because as soon as they're washed, that reduces their shelf life or reduces the amount of time they can last in store. While there are some technologies out there that can uh, grade dirty potatoes, they're quite limited at the moment and not competitive with the human eye. So I've just picked this tuber up um, and you can see on it there's a relatively small slug hole there. When this came across the grading line, uh, it would still have been a little bit wetter and there might have been a bit of mud stuck to it. It's very hard for a machine particularly to spot this. In this case, a, a human being missed it, that can happen. Um, but that's why we need some technology that's going to be able to work with this and spot things that are quite hard to see on the surface of a tuber. The labour that we rely on is becoming increasingly hard to source. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, Brexit is one tightened immigration policies in the UK. Covid has been an issue in 2020, but we expect that supply of labour to get tighter in the coming years, so it's becoming increasingly critical for us that we have other ways to grade our potatoes into store. So I'm standing in front of about a thousand tonnes of potatoes in this particular room that were brought in here immediately after harvest and grading. Storage is a really important part of the equation because we've got to be able to keep the quality and hold the quality of these potatoes through to when we're able to sell them. Um, a big part of that is temperature. We keep these potatoes between two and three degrees to um, maintain them for the fresh market. But another key issue is sprout suppression. We have to stop those sprouts growing because no consumer wants to buy a potato that's already growing. Um, in this particular store, we're using an ethylene-based system uh, it works reasonably well, but there are plenty of other alternatives out there and alternatives hopefully coming to the market soon um, that are really exciting for the industry. So you'd perhaps think that after growing potatoes for 70 years plus we'd have all the answers, but that's far from the case. Um, the landscape around us keeps changing. We are having plant protection products withdrawn on a regulatory front. There are increasing different pest and disease pressures from climate change that mean we need more new and innovative solutions to be able to keep growing potatoes effectively. Uh, recently we've lost Diquat which was a really important um, product for desiccating um, potato tops to allow us to harvest them. Um, we've managed in 2020 without it but if I'm honest I think we were lucky because the weather was with us so there are definitely challenges still there coming up. There are challenges from virus, which is spread by aphids, uh, which can cause real quality and yield issues to the potato crop. 
These are all things that innovative research projects could make an amazing difference to in the industry and I would really welcome people interested in that. Of course one of the classic issues that farms have been faced with forever is weather um, and that just seems to get more extreme if anything. Over the last three years water has been hugely topical. Um, we either have far too much of it and you can hear it beating down on the roof here today or far too little. Um, remember the, the summer of 2018 is scarred onto my mind. Irrigation is a massive topic for us. How we apply water effectively, not just for the yield of the crop, but also for the quality can make a massive difference. There's definitely more work that can be done then to assist the industry. And then the wet spells, they, these can really reduce the windows of time that we can get onto the field, that we can do land work or applications to potatoes. Everything that reduces opportunities in one um, area leads to more challenges, it makes it harder for us. And again, anything that can be done to relieve those challenges um, in any way is helpful to the industry. We're just one of a number of really forward-looking potato growers in this country, including all the spot farm hosts, who would really welcome any PhD student onto our farm for a physical visit to understand our challenges, to look at what we can do, and we're always up for trial work if you have good ideas. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and you can follow the progress of Spot Farm North on the AHDB website.